Hello and welcome to this video about the adaptations and modifications that I've done to this Hobby King Bixler. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did another video where I just talking about the fact that these are kind of often overlooked little gems. They're not particularly expensive. They're amazing trainer aircraft. And I have added another one to my fleet and I've tricked it out with a Walksnell unit with a gimbal in the nose. So I've got HD head tracking. I've got iNav with a SpeedyB flight controller in the middle with a GPS at the top. And I've also done an adaptation here so that I can make the wings removable without the need to play with any tools. Now, a couple of you have asked to look at that to, for me to show that a little bit closer up. I was thinking about doing a video like that anyway, so a massive thank you to those of you that did ask that. Let me go through this, show you how I've done the gimbal and the walk snail adaptation, how I've got the flight controller in here, and also how I've done the mod for the wings. So let's start with potentially the most obvious change that I've made, and that is to the canopy. By default, this canopy is covered by a piece of clear, um, plastic and it kind of that's how it comes however you can see i've modified mine quite a bit i have the walk snow unit on my 3d printed base uh, this is something that's actually on the thingiverse site i'll put a link down below if you want to and then it's got um, everything all on here now this is one of those pieces that required quite a bit of messing around to get everything to fit. And this is what I meant when I said in the original video that this hasn't really been designed with modern FPV in mind. It does come off. So I have to kind of hold it by this and kind of pull it. The reason it's so hard to pull is there's extra magnets. And then the cables underneath, I have my standard kind of JST power connector that allows me to power all this up once the GPS has got a connection and then by default the uh, transmit and receive are connected via these kind of connectors. I put them on the outside pins. Um, I color code one side so if I do have to take it off I can kind of slide them all together. That's just a gold or it might even be the bronze sharpie pen there that kind of helps me do that. Let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail first, and then I'll kind of uh, show you some of the other stuff that I've done. So here, as you can see, the actual sled that it sat on is on a piece of foam. This was just a piece of scrap foam that I had. It's about 12 millimeters deep, just enough to bring this whole assembly above the front here, rather than kind of um, have it on this base. Unfortunately, this base is just not deep enough. And what I've had to do is also had to kind of cut a little bit of a slot here at the back in order to accommodate both the gimbal and the walk snow unit and all the different pieces on this 3D printed part. Uh, this is one of those bits that actually moves from model to model. So I tend to uh, not like to keep it too much in place. Uh, it is held in place at the front by two M3 screws that go into uh, a couple of standoffs that are actually glued at the front. At the back, although it's actually uh, recessed into the foam here, I've cut that piece out, I've actually put a cable tie over the whole thing through the bottom and used part of just, uh, I think this was from a Magnum lolly, actually, from summer. Uh, always keep the sticks from your uh, ice creams. They come in incredibly useful. That's just there for a bit of strain relief. And that kind of works really nicely. The only other thing I've done, I have put black tape because when you pull the, the top canopy part of this off, it tends to pull a lot of the black paint that's on here. It's not particularly well adhered. I've got myself some black tape and just kind of try to put it over the top just to make it look a little bit less grotty. Um, but that's how I've done it. Again, link to this base unit is on the Thingiverse page. The only other thing I've done is I was worried about this popping out um, of this recess here that's actually in the model. Now there is uh, a magnet by default that's there. I have added an additional strong neodymium magnet in here and I actually use black hot glue. Um, it's really good stuff. It's really sticky. I don't know what brand it is. I got it ages ago. It's, it lives in this kind of Dremel gun. It's incredibly sticky stuff. And I put my magnets in there. And what I found is that when this little thing is in place, it kind of snaps in beautifully. 
I can kind of lift the whole thing with this. It's, it's really quite solid, which is why when I have to lift it out, I kind of have to grasp each side of this little foam block that everything's mounted on and it kind of comes clear. With that out the way, let me unplug this. This is why I'm very glad that I color code these kind of things. Um, you can see how we got the flight controller in it. Uh, the flight controller, I'm just going to have to kind of insert a picture here. It is kind of slotted all the way in the back and it's held in place by two strips of double sided foam tape. The receiver is mounted on the top and you can see here that the receiver antennas actually come here out the side. Again, this is a chase plane, so I put this on um, old Free Sky receiver, one of the large X8Rs, you know, kind of this kind of looking thing here. The reason I did that is most of the modern planes that I'm getting in for review are going to be running on Express LRS. So I'm going to set it up with that and when we're at the field one will be flying that and I'll be flying this potentially with a gimbal. Um, so the way that I did it and again I, I did this video a while ago where I actually showed how I set all of this up so that it's um, done all on the bench make sure it's all completely happy when it's done that stuck the receiver onto the top and then because it had the two power leads on it already both for the battery and also for the esc i can kind of connect everything up plug all the cables into the flight controller and then kind of with the foam tape on the bottom slide the whole thing in here trying not to touch the bottom because actually i'm not sure if you can see here but the bottom of this model does actually have a flat spot. It's about 35, 40 millimeters wide, which is just wide enough for the flight controller. So it will sit down on there when with two strips of 3M uh, VHB tape, I think it is that I use here, it'll absolutely stick and it won't move. So that's how I kind of got everything in there. I cut a channel at the top for the GPS. Um, so I kind of cut this around here. This is a little black 3D printed bezel. This is one of the Matek units. And then uh, using a long thin thing, um, you know, things like this kind of tweezers actually drove down because the nice thing is, is there's actually this little kind of pillar here at the front of where the wings connect. So I can kind of go straight down into the bottom and I can feed the cable up for the GPS and plug it in. Now, of course, the issue is, is because this uh, GPS compass unit is right by the side of these strong neodymium magnets to make sure that my walk snail unit isn't ejected or falls off as I'm flying around, it means I've disabled the compass. There's no point trying to use the compass on here. It's going to be completely banjaxed by having all of those pieces. Oh, and the last thing to talk about here is in the side. This is the external board here. Again, held in place with some uh, 3M VHB tape. Um, this has the buzzer and the connection, and that's nicely out the way. The battery kind of sits here where the tape is on the nose. There's loads of room in here at the front. It's just you kind of have to post the whole flight controller assembly into it. And it kind of sits more or less underneath where the central gravity is, which kind of helps in terms of keeping all the CG correct and other pieces. So we've looked at how I've modded the canopy to put the Caddick stuff on it. Um, we've looked at how the flight controller is in here. The last one is how I have done the modification for the wings. Now, let me grab the wings quickly and show you how they go together. So by default, the two wing sets look like this and they have um, reinforcing pieces on each side and they go together like this inside the top of the Bixler and then normally a long screw would go through to secure them in place. Now I wanted it so that that was not going to happen on mine because I wanted to be able to take off and fit the wings toollessly. So there's a couple of different options and loads of different ways about how I could do this. Obviously, I do want, don't want to glue the wings. I know some people like to have that extra level of security. This is not going to be doing acrobatics or rolls. I just need to stop the wings from coming out. I could have absolutely just put a couple of big neodymium magnets in the middle, but I if, like a physical connection. So hopefully you can kind of see this. If I put something white behind it, maybe it'll show up a bit better. See there inside, is that helping? Um, there are two pins that go down. 
All this is, is just a piece of a metal coat hanger. I use these all the time for different things. Most of the models that you'll ever see behind me, the Lego Star Wars stuff, the, the, the actual mounts from them are made from this. You can bend it very easily with some pair of pliers and um, it's nice, easy metal to use. And the way it works is that those go into the gaps through the holes and actually lock both of them in place. Now, I didn't want that clip being ejected as I flew around. So the only other thing I did, I cut a little bit of a recess, stuck a guess what, another little neodymium magnet in there. And these fit absolutely beautifully. The only thing I might do now I'm looking at it is that they, they look a bit scruffy at the top. I might actually print a couple of 3D pieces here that will just make those look a little bit less like big open holes. But that is the way that I get to the field. So what I do when I get to the field, I pull this out. I put the wings in place, make up. This is a Y cable for the aileron, so it doesn't matter which side is which. And then once the wings are in place, I kind of feed this through make sure everything's lined up and when it all snaps down and the neodymium magnet grabs onto that then we're actually tickety-boo not too super worried about the fact that we're not super streamlined with things like the antennas with things like the pod at the front because you know what pixels aren't really streamlined anyway that's not their uh, that's not their bag however Putting it all together means that uh, it flies really great and does what I want it to. And with, like I say, with a bit of effort, you can actually get modern electronics in here in a way that allow you to turn it into something that can fly with iNav or Audio Pilot and with things like HD with stuff like Gimbals too. So hopefully for those of you that were interested in this, that's kind of explained how I've done it and given you a whistle-stop tour. Again, most of this is an Exacto knife, a bit of hot glue, and a bit of thinking with the odd neodymium magnet. But it's amazing what you can do when you're motivated and you have a spare couple of hours to figure stuff out. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.